And we're back with some more oxygen not included. And today we're going to be designing a nuclear reactor that can fit inside a broken open rocket. Now, we don't want to actually design it on our live map because, you know, this is going to have horrible problems and we're going to want to take a few attempts to get it right. So let's go load up a test map. New save loaded up, and we have enabled the debug menu. If you don't know how to enable the debug menu, you can do that using the, uh, just Google Oxygen on Intruder Debug Menu, it'll bring you to the wiki page on it. Hitting backspace brings up this, and it allows us to see the entire map, which is nice. However, if we get rid of backspace again, we, we can't see the entire map. So, let's go do a few changes here. First things first, we want to go into Game, Options, Game, Enable Sandbox Mode. Yes, please. And what we can do is turn that on and get rid of all of these things. Oh, we don't need the duplicates. They can all go. Then we're going to go to the top of the map, and it's up here that we're going to be placing the rockets. Ooh, hmm. we don't need a lot of space for this. Let's check them down around here. When placing the other rocket platforms, though, you're going to want to do Control f 4 That allows you to build things instantly. So, boom, done, 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 done. If you don't have Control f 4 pressed, I think it should still make it, as long as you have Sandbox Mode enabled. However, I don't think it deconstructs them for you. Yeah, so you have to have Control F4 pressed to deconstruct things instantly. It's kind of handy, so it's definitely a good idea to have uh, Control F4 pressed. Now, it doesn't really matter what what uh, module we put on here, because all we're going to be going for is these solo space fair modules. Uh, we're going to build a few of these, because we're going to want to do a few different tests. Then, this shall be our first test rocket. Uh, we can deconstruct a bunch of this stuff in here. Yeah, that can all go. Uh, get rid of these, and since in our test map we've just destroyed the diamond it should look something a bit like that then we have to figure out how we're going to squeeze a nuclear reactor in here first thing we do wall in the entire way around this way we know exactly how much space we've got to work with now, i have been advised that if you put stuff into the the blackness here it disconnects on reload so what we want to do is maybe chuck some wires all the way around the edge and in fact we're going to want to connect those all up yeah, that might be an idea. I would just want to see what happens if we do a save reload if all these wires break. Perfect. Now we'll just do a quick save reload. Ah, I think I see what they were talking about. The bottom layer does not seem to keep all the connections. They appear to get severed on reload. The sides, though, and the top seem to be fine. So it's just the bottom layer that's going to cause us problems. Okay. Okay, we can live with that. Oh, uh, one thing. If we uh, get rid of the, the backspace, we can't see... The rest of this place in here so what you can do is it's control f2 and it spawns a duplicate and then you can use alt and q with it selected to move it around so then we can just move it around the place to make sure we can actually see everything uh, another option is you can use sandbox mode and they have a reveal tool in here and you can use that to reveal the uh, reveal the visible space i sometimes prefer to use uh, duplicates to do it because you'll get points of interest buildings that won't be revealed by the reveal tool for some reason and you have to use a duplicate to reveal them i don't know why that is all right let's delete those wires and just remember not to place anything through the bottom layers that we need and this is at the very edges right that gets rid of all of that and the great thing about this is so long as you have um control f4 pressed you can now sweep everything instantly oh and that can all go as well might as well have the place clean my initial instinct is to put the reactor up here in the top right. We've got more space on this side. You see, we're stuck on this side. We've got this door in the way. This door means, well, this is always going to be the shortest distance from this side to this side. This gives us more distance this side. Though we're still limited by this gas input-output port. If we melt that, it seems it will cause the game to crash on reload. So let's not mess with that port. Which means we've only got this much space to work with. So 12 tiles. Other side, we've only got actually 12 tiles. Wait, how does that work? Huh. We've actually got more tiles on the left side than the right side. That just... Did not expect that. Hmm. Alright, we'll start the reactor in the top right, and then we'll worry about the left-hand side in a little bit. When it comes to research reactors, all of the water, nuclear waste, everything, all the steam, all that stuff drops out right here. Uh, so what'll happen is a big blob of steam will get dropped. Well, big blob of superheated water will fall, and will land down here. So we need to make sure there's a nice straight drop for it. We can seal in the rest of the areas here, and we're probably going to need some to leave some room for refueling, but that means we need to put down steam turbines. Uh, and this is where it gets complicated. You see, we want to try and squeeze in nine of them. We need nine steam turbines to make this work, and the one about there is fine. The problem is this. We need to have, say, three tiles there for the steam turbine to fit in. 
then we need about two tiles of space for the steam to get in. If we don't have enough space for the steam to get in, these things won't be able to draw enough. Oh, and I don't think we can fit enough of them in here. Yeah, that's going to be problematic. Ah, uh, you know what? Worry about it in a minute. Let's see roughly what we can fit in here with this horrible mess. Well, that's not a great design. Uh, there's only one tile gap here, so uh, we just can't fit it in. These ports are getting in the way. Yeah, let me try something a little different. Well, that's also very messy. I mean, oh, we're, we're going to have to replace a bunch of tiles here before we even think about activating this, but it's just, we're trying to get a feel for where the reactor should go. And we still got to remember, we got to insulate this so the radiation doesn't cook everyone that's in here. We're, we're hoping to make a rocket that can hold six duplicates while still having a nuclear reactor in there. This is going to be uh, tricky. Now, we could always just continue that up that way. Uh, shorten that, make a few changes. I don't like the look of this. It just takes up too much space. I'm sure we can figure out a, sm a way to fit this in sh smaller. Now, one thing I was looking at, but I'm not sure if it's possible. We could theoretically fit five steam turbines across the top, or say six steam turbines across the top. That's very space efficient. However, there's a problem. How do we get the power out of there? Also, if we try to use a liquid medium here, how do we get the duplicates to build it? I mean, you could get them to build, say, a ladder up here. Like, we'll just uh, ignore this for the second. Imagine we get a ladder in, because we still have to get someone in there. And we could build a ladder system up, then wall it in afterwards, behind us, as we go out. Which, okay, in theory, and let's just say we went with a gas background right in there, instead of liquid. We could probably get in liquid if we use some naphtha and some tricks. We're also going to have to put in backing plates and all that stuff. But how do we get the power out? problem with the power is if you go with we're going to want heavy conductive wire it's 850 watts there so if you connect all of those together how do you get it out of there without leaking heat we try and put it in here this is going to be a steam room this entire area is going to be covered in steam you can't place it down the edges here and we have to seal off these edges to make sure steam doesn't escape into the background of space so how do we get it out now at first i thought this was an insurmountable problem however i think there might be a way instead of actually doing the power that way what we could do and it's dumb but it might be not the worst idea. We'll just link to each two of them together and say, we'll bring you down to there, bring you down to, hmm. you know what? Done. We actually get all the power to pump into transformers. We then link the transformers into a heavy watt. So we're feeding less than two kilowatts of power onto each one of them so the lines will not overload. Then we can get these large transformers and we can, or we can get the power wire from here and we can put in a vacuum plate somewhere, it doesn't matter where. We could just say, do a little joint plate like that. That means all the power is able to get out of there. We'd have to make all these transformers out of steel so they wouldn't overheat. And then done, the power would be able to get out of there and we could put everything on the top floor. Hmm. Though we'll have to see, that gives us 16 turbines and it's quite space efficient, I do like that. Now we just gotta figure out where we put the other three steam turbines. Now, oh. When it comes to nuclear reactors, the tradition is to run them with 10 steam turbines. However, the last one will not run at full capacity. So what I was thinking was we would just run nine. If we can run nine, I mean, if we could get into 10th, that would be great, but we're kind of very space deprived here. So if we could just get by with nine of them, sure, the temperature in here would get a little bit hot, get up to about 210 degrees, which means there's some inefficiency going on. It's not the end of the world. I mean, if we can cram it inside a rocket and we only get nine steam turbines, I'm not going to be, you know, crying any tears over that. That's a decent amount more space we've managed to cram it into, but I think we can definitely squeeze a more space. For example, we could rip off that top set of blocks and move them all up one tile. Oh, and this is just, it seems awkward. Like, there's a few changes we can make here, but I think we'll just leave this one for now, and we'll move on to the next one using that as a template. Oh, yeah, I should probably... You see, one of the things I wanted to test here was down the bottom we're putting in blocks. What if we didn't have to? So what I've done here is I haven't put in any blocks, I've just put in backing plates and thrown down a chunk of water, and the water seems to stay in there. That means we could run steam through here, and that saves us a whole section of blocks down the bottom as well. Now, just how can we exploit that to make a better nuclear reactor in here? Now that looks like a much neater and cleaner reactor. We'd have the research reactor here. Oh, I don't know how we'd manage the automation on it just yet, but worry about that in a minute. That gives us 10 turbines as well to work with, which is pretty handy. And it seems the water doesn't leak out the edges. We haven't got any blocks here. We're just putting in background plates and we're not having any, any issues with just stuff disappearing into the background of space. It's working. Uh, I don't know if this is the final design we'll come upon, but we're going to do some more testing. Hmm. Yeah, well, this one looks interesting. I don't think it's quite as efficient as this one. This one seems to take up the entire bottom half of the map. 
This one only has nine steam turbines yet. Uh, I would have to do a double check. But uh, interesting, but I'm not sure we're going to go with this way. After trying a few different variations and just moving them about the place, I think the best or the one I'm sort of leaning towards right now is this one. It just, it seems to fit in quite nice and neatly. It gives us a good distance from this door. We're going to need to put in some uh, insulation around this to make sure the radiation, we're going to need radiation below 100 for everyone over here. Uh, as well as that, we're probably going to be walling in the top with plastic tiles as well. Plastic or lead will do the same thing. Plastic or lead have the highest uh, radiation resistance in the game. So that drops it to 80 rads. Oh wow, that's still barely livable. Are we going to have to double layer this just to make sure our duplicates can live in here? Because we've got, we're going to have a radio, a, a nuclear reactor in here. It's going to definitely drive up the rads. Okay, that drops us to 26. Oh, that's going to leave us a lot less space than I thought. You know what? Let's, uh, let's turn on this reactor. See how much rads we're dealing with and see if we can't get this thing working. And let's check some uranium in there. We've got water, uranium, and it's going to pipe up. Let's see. What are we looking at in the rads front? 3,000 rads. Yep, that's, that's more like it. Ooh. That's a lot of rads. Okay, we can wall in across here at least. That makes it semi-livable over there. That's fine. Uh, I might want to actually move back these power generation things just a little bit and maybe move up the water thingy. I think the rads might be a bit more of a problem than I was anticipating, even with three layers of plastic or like lead is the exact same. If we just chuck on lead, it'll have absolutely zero difference. We've got the same problem of it's just it's, there's too many rads up here. Uh, over here we're getting 260. Oh, we can't have any more than 100. You know what? Let's just replace all of this with lead in case I've gone crazy and lead is actually better. No, nope. exact same. Right. Okay then. So what could we squeeze in here? If this is what we've got left to deal with, I mean, once we start putting in some more buildings, some atmosphere, stuff like that, it should definitely eat into the rads. Ooh, maybe we could put a farm on top here. Might be possible to stick a farm on top, though we don't have any radioactive plants we'd like to use just yet. Hmm. All right, let's uh, say we lock in this design, and then we go on to figuring out how we fit six duplicates in here. We need to try and cram a lot of things in here, and half the rocket's already gone because of the nuclear reactor. I mean, I don't regret putting in the nuclear reactor, but it's definitely going to make things a little bit more challenging. We've got six atmosuit docks here. We're going to need six dining tables, six beds. We're then going to need to either... Think about whether we're doing a deep food freeze, like so put in a deep freeze and then we can chuck in a bunch of food, or maybe we just go with berry sludge. I think I prefer deep freeze, to be honest, so that might make things easier. Then we also got to think about oxygen. Do we deal with, uh, well, oxygen production or we're just sticking lots of, uh, lots of oxalite? We might want to go with infinite water storage, though. Then do we put in a telescope so this thing can explore the stars as it goes along? Atmosuit repair? Do we have room for a nature reserve? There's a lot of questions. Uh, let's just sort of... I find the best thing to do is just throw in some stuff, see how much you can get in, and then you sort of tweak it as you go along. This is sort of the initial starting state. What we've got here is dining hall. That is actually a great hall, I should say. Great hall because we've put in a party line and we've got some decor items. Six duplicates can dine here. Uh, we've also got this mini gas pump over here. This is going to pump gases. All the carbon dioxide should gravitate down here towards the bottom right. And when it does, this gas pump should pick it up and pump it out. Now, hmm... Uh, this might be a little preemptive because premature because over here we're going to have to put in other stuff but maybe if we make sure that all the stuff in here is non-serviceable we won't have any CO2 in there to worry about but in theory that should make sure all the CO2 gets vented out into either no oxygen will get vented back in here CO2 will get vented out into space by going through this uh, spacefare gas port and done on that front and then up here we've got six beds six beds stacked right on top of each other so just behind the dining hall then we have to figure out where we're going to put everything else. Okay, I, I got a little distracted. I was just, I was starting off on this and then I decided, well, let's just turn on the reactor and see how it works. Now, uh, ignore this mess over here. That, that's related to a different messy problem I'm trying to figure out. Uh, instead, let's have a look at this section down here. Okay, actually, we kind of can't ignore this mess completely. This is going to be infinite uh, nuclear waste storage, but realistically, the problem it causes is it blocks off this area here, so steam can't be transferred from this area to this area. So it's a sealed off area. And we just transfer the heat across to try and make this place hot enough to get the steam going. However, we've run into a problem. We fill this place, say, with steam. Up to 30 kilos of pressure. You see, it's 30 kilos exactly in every single tile, top to bottom. Then what we're going to do is we're going to turn this sucker on. And we'll just turn all of you on. And what happens is, eventually, all the steam disappears. The steam is disappearing, vanishing, and it just... 
it, it doesn't seem to exist anymore. Uh, it slowly goes down and down and down. For example, it's 22 kilos over here. It is 21 kilos over here. It's just, it's disappearing. I think I figured out what's happening though. It's the water droplets. So the water is dropping out of this and then it just drops off the bottom of the map and disappears. I think that's to do with toilets. See, the wall toilets you get in this game, you uh, mount them up and it has a, a tube at the back. So when dupes can use it, the water drops out the side of the rocket. So I think what was meant to happen was those droplets of water just fall off the edge of the map, which is exactly what seems to be happening here. You can see, like, it's gone into three kilos. There used to be 30 kilos of pressure in there. So if we turn these off... Yeah, the pressure's just completely gone. That... That finished? Yeah. Okay, that was just pointless. However, if we were to, say, replace this... Let's just stick in some bunker tiles. Uh... What? Oh, there we go. Now it's back up to 30 kilos again. We turn everything on. Then we'll give it a few minutes and come. we'll turn them off and see if this pressure is stabilized. Well, I think it's stabilized, but we've got a problem. You'll notice down here that it's turning into a vacuum. Uh, if we go under gases, you see, the gas pressure just keeps getting lower and lower the further you go to the right. It's just because the gas can't flow fast enough because we haven't left enough space. Uh, we could try increasing the gas pressure, but I think... Uh, you may have to... Uh, damn it, I really do not want to change this design right now. I think I figured it out. Uh, all I've done is I've replaced all these bottom tiles with airflow tiles. By putting in airflow tiles, I left it on for a bunch of time, and now that I've come back, pressure's evened out to 30 kilos after I turned them off again. So this ran for a while, and we didn't get any loss in resources. So we're still getting weird lag every cycle or so, and that might be the autosave doing something. So we can't definitely get this to work, but I was thinking we might want to move the infinite liquid storage. Like the whole point of this infinite liquid storage, well, there's a couple of points, but the main one was, we're going to be flying between planets, right? And what we want to do is save up all of that juicy, juicy nuclear waste. And then when we get to the other side, what we can do is, we can say, pump out the nuclear waste and put it into a, compressed into nuclear waste storage so that we can generate rad bolts to power the engines of the rocket. And we can power the rad bolt generators via the power generated by the nuclear reactor. So the nuclear reactor is basically providing all of the rads we need to make the rad bolts to power the engines on the rocket. So what we could do is we could make ourselves an infinite liquid storage by pumping liquid in, but I thought we'd try something smaller. Uh, so what happens here is this drops out nuclear waste, the nuclear waste lands on this tile, like you can see it there, hits that tile and then it overflows this edge. And the way infinite liquid storage works is you just need some way of, well, preventing it from flowing back up. What we've got is oxygen and carbon dioxide here. So this stuff displaces the oxygen, which swaps places with the carbon dioxide or something, or whatever happens, this liquid gets from here to there. And it basically teleports from that section, and the gases stay in place, and you can just keep chucking waste in here. You can see it's up to five kil or 5,000 kilos of pressure. And this has been pressurized normally. However, I think... Oh, this is not perfect. You see, what I want to do as well... Currently, we're running on a, a system where we've got hydrogen in here. We just dumped in a thousand kilos of hydrogen to cool down the steam turbine so they wouldn't overheat while we were testing all of this stuff. Actually, I should turn this back on. And that's fine, but we already need, need to put in an aqua tuner and uh, nuclear waste might not cut it. We might have to hold it for super coolant because nuclear waste would have to come back in here and repair the aqua tuner every so often as the nuclear waste will damage it slowly over time. If oh, Unless they fix that too. Okay, no, we'll, we'll worry about that in a minute. So I think what we want to do is maybe move this around a bit. If we could make this a little bit bigger and I would like to be able to fit in a liquid pump and an aqua tuner. You know, the thing is we can't put an aqua tuner in the bottom layer. If we remember from our power testing, yeah, there'll be a, a we need the aqua tuner to be above this line. Otherwise, the liquid pipes will get cut off. Hmm. So we need some way of moving this around so that it gives us more space. Huh. After doing some playing around, I think I've got an idea about how to make this work. Fit in the aqua tuner and fit in the liquid pump all at the same time. And actually free up this area so that gases can pass through. Uh, so what we're going to do here is, and we've also got a plan to actually build this. That's sort of the problem. You, putting everything in magically is fine, but at some point we're going to have to actually get duplicates to build this and be able to get in and out of the locations we're trying to build in. So say for the priming of this, we'd have to open a pipe of nuclear waste here and drop 10 kilos. Drop 10 kilos of nuclear waste there. And then in here, we'd have to put two gas pipes, one with carbon dioxide. Uh, give me carbon dioxide gas. One kilo, we'll paint that in the bottom, and then we're going to get one kilo of oxygen as well. And we paint that in there. And if we check this, you can see you got one kilo of oxygen, one kilo of carbon dioxide, and... Oh, you know, 
Got yeah, some water or something in there, is there? No, that's steam. It'll be fine. Or is that oxygen? No way. All right, and we got airflow tiles, gases, all flowing around the place. And what are you, oxygen? No, that was a mistake. One second. There we go. Much better. Okay, then. I think that might actually work. All right, so we want to make sure that any of the uh, the nuclear waste that's falling down ends up overflowing over the edge. Uh, this place is already up to 37 kilos. Where's the rest of our... Why is there carbon dioxide down here? How did I mess this up? Yeah, I think we're good. All right, then it's suppose the question is... Oh, damn it. That cannot be a steel tile. We'll make those airflow tiles there. Perfect. That should mean that the gases might be able to escape out of there. Hmm. I don't know exactly how it's going to work. That's one thing you also have to test. We'll have to do a cold start on this before we can commit to the design, just to make sure it's possible to start this up cold in an actual playthrough without using magic debug tools in sandbox mode. But in theory, this should give us infinite uh, nuclear waste storage. Yeah, nuclear waste is starting to pile up. This is... You know what, let's uh, speed this along slightly. What do we got down here? We have... No, that's steam. That's steam. Nuclear waste, 79 kilos. Let's make it 900 kilos. Yeah, we'll drop that in there. There you go. Yeah, actually, make it 100 for now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start dropping in 100 kilos at a time. And we're going to see what happens as this fills up. I think this design might actually work. It's looking like we've got some of the kinks ironed out. What we've done here is we've left a, a sort of a, a steam channel down here to get these steam turbines running. And, okay, the pressure's getting a little bit low on that end. But I think think we might have to jack up the pressure just a little bit more, but it's definitely not above the 150 kilos here that would cause the nuclear rea or the research reactor to overload. So we just have to keep the pressure here below 150, so we've definitely got a little bit more wiggle room. This top half is fine, it's just the bottom half is having a, a little bit of trouble getting the water flow down there. We also redirected the output water that was going down here to this section. And uh, one other problem we faced, which was good. We it's good that we actually knew that dropping drips on the bottom of the map disappeared. Because what was happening here was the nuclear waste was popping down here, rolling off the edge, rolling off this edge, and then rolling off this edge, and then when it hit this part, it just vanished. We were having disappearing nuclear waste. So what you're going to have to do, what I did was, I prepped this area by, by putting down 10 kilos of nuclear waste. And that means it flows from here, plops down here, and then when it rolls off the edge here, it mixes with that nuclear waste instead of dropping off the edge of the map. And so far, it seems to be holding up. I suppose a quick save reload just to see that uh, nothing breaks would be nice. Well, the automation wire didn't sever, which is a good sign. That means we can control this liquid pump. The idea would be this liquid pump wouldn't activate unless this hydro sensor, well, knows that there's nuclear waste there. We don't want to ever drain this below the aqua tuner. And the aqua tuner here should be submerged in nuclear waste, which gives it a lot of heat capacity to absorb all the cooling it's going to be doing. Now I think it's time we stuck in the cooling solution from this. We want to be able to cool all these steam turbines in the whole area. And this is actually working out quite well. Mm, steam pressure's a little bit lower there. I'm thinking we're going to have to crank up the steam pressure in here just a scooch more. We cranked up the steam pressure. It's now 90 kilos at the center. It's 40 kilos at the edge here. And it's about 6 kilos at the edge here. That is more than sufficient. That means all the steam turbines are working sort of flat out. In fact, temperatures have dropped below the 200. This is working out really well. Oh, okay. yeah. That's about to go to hell. The moment we turn on this aqua tuner, temperatures are going to spike up to about 196 or something like that, I think. Uh, we're going to have to run... Oh, you know what, we'll start with... We'll start with nuclear waste. We're going to stick nuclear waste into this coolant loop. I just have to figure out how to place it through. Mm. And uh, we're going to have to rip out the hydrogen backing, and I'm thinking a layer of liquid. A layer of liquid would probably be the best especially when we're designing and building this, well, and during the build phase. Putting in enough gas here would be awkward, and, oh, this is never going to be serviceable. Plus, you want to get the power out, and I think there's a way to do that. You know what? Show, don't tell. And it's done. We've switched the whole thing over to a nuclear waste cooling loop. We got rid of all the super-cooled hydrogen, and everything is... Actually, what are you... Insulated pipe is going minus 14? How is that even possible? Oh, wait, that's ceramic stuff. Uh, down here. Look at this stuff, it's coming out about 40 degrees. We're keeping everything below 42, so this has quite a large amount of uptime. I've checked on the properties on this. Uptime for the last cycle is 64%. 84% for this cycle. Oof. 47% for the last five is maybe a bit misleading. It had to cool down the starting waste. We pumped the waste in from this section here. So it was quite toasty. Uh, also, we've accidentally picked something up. If we go to one of the other colonies here, uh, I found this mess. I'm not sure exactly what caused it, but there's a whole bunch of nuclear waste here. I don't know why, and that 
concerns me. Um, yeah, let's get rid of some of this stuff. You guys all need to go. Yeah, there you go. All gone. Oh, seriously? Come on. Just... Fine. All right, we vacuumed out this entire area, and we're going to get rid of the nuclear waste. Now let's see if it shows back up again. I don't care if there's going to be pro... I would mind if there was going to be problems that would con hit us consistently, but if it's only at the start or on boot up, that's fine. Over a long enough life cycle, you don't really care too much. And you get rid of those liquids there. We don't want them. And I'll keep an eye on this and see if anything else shows up here. Also explains why the map was chugging on autosave. All of these planets have now been activated. All of the critters, all of the... Pl everything. Everything's going at the moment because uh, we use the debug tool and the debug tool has activated all the planets, plants, animals. All the stuff, it's all going crazy out there, which is what's causing the, the game to lag out every time it tries to autosave. Hmm. Alright, I think... I think this thing's just about right. We're going to let this run for about 10 cycles just to make sure it's stable. And then we're going to try a cold boot. Wait, I, I think something's happening every time the game saves. We've just got... A, a danger door overheating warning. And on this island, this is nuclear waste. It's not clearing... There's nuclear waste here. Um... Assuming it's pretty new? Actually, no. Temperatures seem reasonably stable. It's probably been around here for a while. You know what? Let's let's just uh, get rid of this as well. We will assume this was some sort of mess up that happened earlier in the process. Uh, oh my god, there's more nuclear waste over there. Alright, so we're magically dropping nuclear waste across the map. <laughs> and we might have to switch back to... Uh, uh, Making a different nuclear reactor. Damn it, we've invested so much time and effort in this design, though. It's like, oh, seriously? Hey, yeah, fine, we'll, we'll give it a minute. It's been 20 cycles, and from what I can see, no, uh, none of this stuff has magically appeared on other, other islands anymore. There's no nuclear waste showing up anywhere. As far as I can tell, it only happens if we drip feed it down into this section, or drip feed it at the bottom of the map. So I think we're good. Probably. <laughs> Now, it did crash once during the 20 cycles as well, so I'm not going to call this the most stable thing. But it's so neat. Look, we've managed to fit the reactor in just, just perfectly. That's probably the smallest you could possibly make a reactor, almost. Uh, well, a decent size one. That's... It's 448 tiles. Okay, it's not that small. But, you know, we did pretty good, I think. Oh, um... Yeah, I was trying to have a look here if we could do it with the uh, the regular sized rocket, the, the larger rocket capsule. No, that won't actually even allow you to fit in the second layer of steam turbines. It's just these things are too close. Yeah, so it's a good thing we went with the smaller rocket capsules. Sorry. By smaller, I mean the uh, the spacefare nose cones have more space outside of the capsule, whereas the spacefare modules have the same amount of space, but the spacefare module is so much bigger, it kind of makes it harder to work around all the ports and the door and stuff like that. All right, I think since this works, the plan would be we're going to dismantle this and then we're going to do a cold start. As in, we're going to reset the temperature of everything by demolishing a bunch of stuff. And we're going to try and start this sucker up to see if we can actually get this working in a real playthrough. To cool everything back to normal, well, you basically just dump in enormous amounts of hydrogen. And what that does is it just causes everything, all, everything's temperature to get dragged down to normal. We ripped out everything else except for that nuclear waste. In fact, we're going to get rid of that as well. Uh, give us a bit of vacuum. We shall fill that in right there, and we'll get rid of all the hydrogen. Excellent. The whole thing has been reset back to normal. Hmm. Perfect. Now we got to figure out how to start this sucker up. Oh, I forgot to check the water pressure before we did this. Hmm. When starting up a new design, you don't want to make it too convoluted. If it's so convoluted that you can't explain it to other people, then it's just, it's going to be no good. Like, what's the point in showing uh, these designs to people if, if they can't at least replicate them or know how to get them started? So you need to make it fairly handy. So this one here, we've got seven tiles of water. That's seven tons of water in there that we've chucked in. Uh, we'll, we'll see how that works out. And then what we can do is we can put in 10 kilos of nuclear waste here. And the thing is, we can get ourselves 30 kilos of nuclear waste pretty handy. And we can basically put it into a pipe, have it there, and then, well, break the pipe. So boom, you'll get your 10 kilos there. We'll get 10 kilos there. And finally, 10 kilos right there. So that with 30 kilos should prime the whole system. Then we'll have two gas pipes right here. We should be able to gain access by just walking across the top. Oh, and you need to be... Yeah, a mesh tile, don't you? Hmm, never mind. And then we need uh, one kilo of oxygen and one kilo of carbon dioxide. 
I think we are finally ready. We're just going to dump in the enriched uranium. Um, let's Alt Q to move little items like that around the place. Uh, then we're going to enable this pump. Actually, why are you not active? Oh, I forgot. Yeah, I disabled the automation wire on that, but that's fine. It still needs water before it's going to do anything. So you, enable building. So what I've done here is I've stuck in five tons of water in this section. I want to see exactly how much water it's going to take before this is going to boil. Well, seven tons of water in here. That's... We need a lot of steam. Oh, we've already got nuclear waste. And that nuclear waste has already displaced stuff. Well, that's a problem. Let me see what's going on with the gases. Right. What happened to the oxygen? Okay, that got displaced. Well, damn it. Restart. Let's start this again, but let's remove the seven tons of water and still instead pump it in as we go. Nope. Instant problems again. Damn it. it. Knocks the oxygen right out of there, which completely messes up our system. How do we fix that? Okay. Second attempt or third attempt, whatever it is. What we'd have to do is leave this open so that we can get in here and seal this off with an airflow tile or a metal tile of some sort. Then we would turn this on. Uh, give me a wire. Perfect. And we're going to chuck in 10 kgs of enriched uranium. Just 10. And we're going to let you fire up with that. Then what we do is leave it for a single day. Uh, those 10 kilos will keep it going for a day. However, it won't produce nearly as much heat. Hopefully it heats up the whole area enough that we do, can finally remove that tile and replace it with a mesh tile, which should allow us to continue. So let's fast forward to the cycle and see how this plays out. After almost one full cycle, this thing's running out of the 10 kilos of uranium we drip fed it. Uh, steam turbines are starting to come on in some locations. These ones we're not going to touch, but these ones up here we've disabled just to make sure that it spreads out the heat. What we want to make sure is that when this gets turned back on again and we feed it a lot of uranium, it's just going to, the water's going to come out and flash to steam straight away here without trying to force its way through our airlock. See, now under gases, we are still good on our infinite storage. We technically don't need this infinite waste storage. We could just open a block somewhere and let the infinite waste flow out into the background of space and not care. But we kind of want to keep it if we can. All right. So, assuming we've ran it for the full day, everything's calmed down, there's a little bit of waste, we'd have our duplicates come down here, come into this section, and we'd have them replace that tile. Uh, it would be a live replacement, and they would just put in a mesh tile. And now did that cause huge problems? Nope. Steam carbon dioxide. God damn it. Actually, no. What happened to the oxygen? You know what? I don't care. I do not care. So long as there's still two separate gases in there, that works. Hmm, let's do more testing on that later. Anyway, uh, that does mean we'd have to mop up the remainder that's up here. Shouldn't be too much of an issue. Mop away, get rid of that junk. Then I think we're ready to turn this sucker on full tilt. And we would have to delete this. We'd have to deconstruct that and then sweep it up, of course. And we're going to have an annoying problem. Stuff's going to escape into the background of space. But we put a naphta blob there to stop the gases interfering. But see, put that in and that in and done. So, what happens now? Well, then we just dump in lots and lots of uranium. Go for it. Now the question is, does that first blob cause any problems? No. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Then we're just going to feed it in seven and a half tons of water in total and see if that makes a difference or if we need to add in more or less, depending. Oh, and over here. We'll turn all of these back on, uh, then we would have to deconstruct that. And I think we should be able to make a steam turbine from up above. And done. Hmm. And let's see if it takes about 10 cycles and see if the whole thing stabilizes. Oh, and one thing we do have to make sure is that we chill down. Oh, damn it. See, we want to start filling up the, uh, the cooling loop to cool down the steam turbines. Do we have enough liquid in the background of this thing? I don't think so. Probably going to need a lot more nuclear uh, waste in here to actually provide uh, some sort of transfer medium for the aqua tuner. Otherwise, we may start to overheat it. So let's just run this a little bit longer. I need the nuclear waste to start going up to about this level before we activate the liquid pump. Well, our steam turbines are starting to overheat, so we have no choice. We now have to start pumping this. I think we'll be fine, though. We've got a bunch of uh, temperature shift plates down here, so it should stop the nuclear waste from flashing. We just need to keep it below 500 degrees. 
So, what's going to happen now is that nuclear waste is going to get pumped up here. And then we are going to splice it on here. This is not great. Also, it's 200 degrees. This stuff is... Say it's boiling hot is a bit of an understatement. And we just got to make sure we don't take too much of it. We want to make sure there's some left behind. If we drain it all, we might end up running into problems. Ah, it's actually going to drain it from the left instead of the right side first. Yeah, you're coming back around. Let's give it a little bit longer, shall we? Of course, I jammed the whole system up because I wasn't thinking correctly, but that's okay. That's okay. We'll just do a bit of a slice there and there and... Actually, no, that's not going to help, is it? All right, this time... This time, let's do it right. So, do we have enough nuclear waste? Not quite, but we've reset everything to where it was, and we've made a, some minor changes on where the nuclear waste is going to get pumped and how we have connected it. This should work. All right, this time we have 1,150 kilos of nuclear waste here. So we are going to activate nuclear waste pump. We could hold out for super coolant, but I'd like to make these things accessible earlier on, if at all possible. Right, this is going to start filling up the loop. Uh, this might take a minute or several. Oh yes, and it's immediately going to overheat all of the steam turbines. Why are they made out of copper? I should have made those out of steel. That's mm, Okay, so copper is fine. Its melting point is a thousand degrees, so it's not like it's going to be a problem. Uh, you, when it comes to the pumping, I think we're done. Excellent. Now, the reason I spliced them on all this way was so that we could do something along these lines. We could slice that off there, slice that off there, and boom. Okay, then. Perfect. Now, we're going to have a problem when this actually manages to cool everything down, but we'll deal with that when the time comes. For now, though, we have all of the steam turbines overheated. Every single last one of them. So the temperatures in here might get a little bit toasty. What we want to make sure is the aqua tuner doesn't go above 275. If that's the case, we can't put in a steel one in here. Uh, your property is 240. Mm. I'll keep an eye on it. We'll see how it goes. This has got to get the steam turbines below... 100 degrees before this hits 275, otherwise we're going to be trapped using a higher temperature-resistant aqua tuner. And I don't think we're going to make it. And we're over the 275 mark. So either i got to throttle this and slowly wind it up a bit, or we got to feed this full of nuclear waste before we turn on the whole system, and before we set up the system. Ah. Trixie. Yeah, we'll see how bad it gets. Temperature hits about 310 degrees before we start pumping liquids cool enough to start bringing the steam turbines back online again. Hmm. Pity. I mean, okay, it's 35 degrees hotter than we'd like. Uh, for, say, 40 degrees, whatever. Hmm. There may be ways around that, but I still think this system is salvageable and definitely a usable system. And we're golden. This thing is actually chugging along quite nicely. Uh, temperatures are perfect all the way to the end. It's 197 degrees over here, 198.8 over here. Pressure is about 8 to 10 kilos, 70 kilos in the center. Like, it's all flowing perfectly. 7.5 tons of water. Probably could get by with 7, but 7.5 seems to work fine. Uh, only problem on the boot up was we needed a thermium aqua tuner. But I think I can figure out a way around that. So, I mean, start up on this. Worst case scenario, we'll have to hold that for space metals. But, yeah, I think we can do this with steel and nuclear waste. We don't need super coolant and we don't need thermium. However, we can get super coolant if we go... I think you have to go to the aquatic island, if I remember. Is it the hydro one? Yeah, this one down here is the one that has the graphene. So if we go to that island first, we can be sorted. However, we don't need to, I don't think. I'm pretty sure we can get by with the nuclear waste. Uh, turning this on and off, though, will be a problem. See, we'll stick in an on-off switch. The problem, though, is even if you turn off, it, turn it off, it's still going to have at least six days worth of uranium in it. Probably, though, it can't have a, as high as 12. So, could be awkward that way. Oh, and I think I know how to start this properly. Before, what I did was I switched out that mesh tile and let all the nuclear waste fall down. I switched out the, uh, the airflow tile to mesh when we were on boot-up. That dropped too much down at once and caused problems with our gases. What we should have done is mopped it. Mop the top of it, replace the airflow tile with a mesh tile, and then the next blob down will just be steam and nuclear waste and it should go straight to normal. So we can definitely get our infinite storage working. And as for getting the aqua tuner started, I'm pretty sure we can actually pump in, say, 10 blobs of nuclear waste, let that go around a few times until it cools down, pump on another 10 blobs, another 10 blobs, and do it slower next time around so that some of the heat has time to get eaten. And we can 
we should be able to keep that with steel. However, that still leaves us with, well, what do we actually build in here? How do we make this system? Oh, actually, before that question's answered, this out here is the power that it's generating, as in 8.5 kilowatts of power. This is a mobile nuclear reactor we can fly to other colonies and then plug in to power those colonies. Think about it, you could just fly nuclear reactors from location to location. That is just, mm, I love the, just, yes, just perfection. Oh, and this is just, uh, yeah, this is the, the problem you have designing anything new. The first time you're designing any nuclear reactors, petroleum boilers, just anything at all, this is the stuff you go through. Just, just so much dumb stuff. Like, we didn't need these mesh tiles down here in the end. We probably actually could have just gone with background tiles. But all those little tricks we picked up along the way, some of them came in useful again, like especially when it came to putting nuclear waste. You know what? Never mind. It's the joys of designing things in Oxygen Unincluded. So many false starts and so many mess-ups, but I think I think this is a beautiful little number in the end. And uh, we'll just have to see how well it works long term. How about a, a little design competition rebuild? Who'd like to try and design a few uh, like a, a base that fits in here? Say, actually, that looks just about perfect. I'll, I'll upload the save for this. And if you would like to design living quarters that can fit a minimum of six duplicates for interplanetary missions for doing stuff. You want to make it super sustainable? Go for it. You want to make compressed liquid storage, compressed oxygen storage, just, you know, go ham. I've got to figure out something to put in here, and I'd be more than happy to steal other people's ideas and inspirations for, for making a livable rocket in here. This is the livable space. Save file is attached. If you got any suggestions, I'm more than open to them. Oh, and use whatever materials you want. If you want super coolant or thermium or any of that stuff, we can always go get that if needs be. But if you can keep it to more available stuff like steel and things like that, uh, go for it as well. We'll, we'll call that extra bonus points. Anyway, I'm going to cut this out here. Next episode, we'll be actually building this monstrosity in-game. Uh, I hope you enjoyed him. Good luck.